the times are bad great is the suffering loud are the cries of the poor and the earth there's a great sense of desolation among the people emptiness sadness skepticism no enthusiasm no peace and fear are being manifested these days someone commented that the world is grieving the one word that describes all of us and in the uh, and the world is grief a sense of helplessness is creeping in and the view is that all is bad news but the times and experience of the biblical people are also similar to us it can be likened to our experience in isaiah's time the hebrew people were in babylon in captivity they were demoralized alienated feeling punished living with guilt and there they were longing for change they were longing for a reprieve longing for a return the christians in the days of peter persecuted scorned for their belief disturbed by false teachings and preachers or waiting for the promised return of the lord they sought an end to their sense of loss and pur- purposelessness but in the days of john the baptist in mark's gospel there were people awaiting for the promised one and they went after in search of anyone who could feel their emptiness they want something they were longing for something Uh, whether it's in the desert or whether it is in the jungle you find that they were ready to go because they wanted their emptiness to be filled uh, in bad times people always seek to be filled a stranger huh? it is something is a truth when we are empty we want to be filled but darkness does not have the last say even if the sun is blocked off by the haze or the cloud the sun is still there the sun the sun is sure to rise and that's how the scripture gave hope to the disillusioned to the broken hearted to the seekers and the waiting now god is as sure as the sun as sun rises every day whether you see it or not blocked or unblocked you find that god's faithfulness is like that like the sun simply desolation does not last forever your empty time your empty moment does not last forever all of us will undergo our moments of desolations and consolations but what the world is going through is on a larger scale if you are looking at yourself and you say you are feeling desolate and lacking you want consolation the world is also uh, at a very big scale longing for that and you find that god never failed to remind the biblical people that all things are in his hands that he is the god of consolation the consolation could come in any form through any any unexpected mediums sometimes people are narrow minded the one consolation they only look here they fail to see that consolation can come from another source you find that people are very fixed the only one particular way god to act but god can come in a mysterious way he act in a mysterious way and that is why he taught them uh, especially to, uh, in, in the time of prophet isaiah that there is going to rise cyrus of persia and he is going to be the hope and consolation a foreigner to set the israelites israelites free from the babylonian exile see they thought your own people will save them the prophets will save them but here comes a foreigner who sets them free from babylon captivity and sends them back so you find that is god is also a god of surprise he baffles us and peter reminded his people that the true and real consolation is not so much of the end of the world must come the second coming must come or the christ must come 
it is having the right understanding of god knowing god for who he is that god is slow because he wants to save all wow it's fantastic you know huh? the understanding of saint paul so he's asking them to live in hope live with hope also and that the new heavens and earth will come but not your time maybe but any time be ready for that and a much and we find that the much awaited end will come eventually but that is not for you to worry just keep on living a good holy uh, fruitful life and know that god is with you and eventually through you or in another time the new heavens and new earth will emerge so for john the baptist he is trying to tell us you know the real consolation is also knowing that we are forgiven you know when people experience the forgiveness of god or forgiveness of a, a person who loves you the tremendous consolation you get forgiveness is uh, is love in another form love is forgiveness forgiveness is love and that is why we find when we are forgiven we find tremendous consolation consolation is knowing that you have been forgiven consolation is knowing that uh, the spirit lives in you and that is why he's talking about that i am only giving you uh, this forgiveness and of sins but there's one who's going to come whose spirit is going to move you wow huh? and that's the where your real consolation is that to know that the spirit dwells inside us and that is why uh, saint paul always reminds us no the spirit that you receive is not a spirit of fear but a spirit of power love and self control that's the spirit that's the spirit that we have within us not to be fearful to know that uh, there's a god of consolation uh, the god of consolation is also giving us hope uh, so you find that uh, when you look at this uh, so consolation also takes many forms and it can be different for the in the days of isaiah it was different in the days of peter it was different in the days of the john the baptist it was different it grows you know consolation can come as many faces and therefore in order to experience this consolation there are no quickies people want instant one quickies there is no quickies here we need the spirit of god and there is no effective consolation without god's intervention no god no consolation we be looking we think we found consolation these all temporary ones things cannot console us uh, you find that only god and his love console us that is why you find that in the whole of scripture you see no alliances no personalities no relationships no materialism no philosophies no analysis can console us or comfort us all those are, are just an exercise but the real consolation comes after undergoing a certain process first is you see yeah, within each of us what was happening to those who were going to the desert to see john the baptist they were healing the ghosts of their past we all have a lot of hantus in our lives you know now we all carry with us a lot of ghosts the ghosts of the past and this uh, you must free yourself you have to exercise yourself and deliver yourself from these spirits uh, you don't need uh, the one to come and stand before you with two horns you know now all of us carry with us some ghosts of the past and we must let the ghosts of the past be healed free yourself that's the first Uh, we may say letting go of the past psychology will have a different way of looking at it number 2 aligning our aligning ourselves uh, aligning ourselves in with the one who wants our best god wants our best so you give up one you must have a replacement see and that replacement is go back to god and that is what was the, that was that was what was happening uh. they gave up an old life and they embraced a new life in the uh the life of baptism or water then the baptism of the spirit then what is very natural is we all will have to grieve sometimes uh, this change over takes time 
We have to struggle with it. It's very painful time. That's why grief for a determined time. When you lose something, when you're letting go your past and going to a new direction, there's a certain pain. They call it the grieving time. And we have to handle it. But don't forever and ever grieve. Lah. Huh? Then you grieve, 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 you go into a, what they call a sorrowful state. We don't want, uh, now we already have seven sorrows of Mary, we don't want the eighth sorrow, you know. Huh? I don't want you to be the eighth sorrow. Huh? So seven sorrows is enough. Okay. So the grief huh, is temporary. You have to grieve and be real. And when you see people, when people pass away, when people die, you find that they said, we must allow grieving. But we cannot be grieving until the end of the world. Huh? That's the moment there. Huh? It's the time. And then we begin to live again. We have lost somebody, then after that we begin to live again. And this is what must take place. So this process, uh, it's a very important process. You, know? you find that psychology also applies it, psychiatrists also apply it, uh, even in the uh, spiritual uh, development also is applied. Uh, past, embrace the present, handle it, then prepare for the future. So for Sina, see, she said, what, what did she say? It is impossible for anyone or anything to harm you when your heart is perfectly set on the Lord. So you find that after all, uh, when all the things are there, all the problems are there, but when you begin to set your heart on God, you find that somehow you have an inner strength to cope with all these things. They may not disappear, you know, but you are able to live, you are able to cope. And that is why, you see, hope is what? Hope is not just some wishful thinking. St. Paul says, hope saves. Hope is in what we do not see. And when we wait in patience on God, on His word and His promises, that is hope. Not kosong, you know. Ah, I wish lah, I wish lah. No, it's based on the word of God. It's based on His promises. Based on what he has told. So you've had Prophet Isaiah, the Israelites, they always clung, uh, they clung to God uh, on the word. You said it. It is written, they say. And it, uh, and it help us. So today, my dear, uh, just to conclude, uh, you see that what happens is that people, what do they hope in actually? They always hope uh, for the events or things that are happening around them to change, you know. They want the events to change. They want the happenings around them to change. But real hope is when we rely on the God of change. We want the change, but not the God, many people. But what you need is go to the God of change. Find the God first, and the God will bring the change. That is different. Huh? We want situations to change. We want us to change, the COVID to change. But are we looking for the God of the COVID? Uh, maybe, maybe we have to reverse the order. Uh, maybe we have to look for the God who allowed this to happen. And maybe he has an answer there. Uh, so maybe, see, some, sometimes we think he's, yeah, everything God, God, God. Uh. But there is no way. Everything that happens around us has God in it. Okay? So, hope don't hope on the events to change, but have hope on the God of change.